at a meeting of the Council of the University of the Free State uh, today, the 23rd of November. The Council approved the following with regards to the MT Stain Statute. Firstly, the relocation of the MT Stain Statute in full consultation with the Stain family. Secondly, the process of relocation will take place in a dignified manner. Thirdly, the necessary legislation processes set out by the Free State Heritage Resources Authority will be followed. And lastly, project caring becomes a crucial focus for 2019 and beyond with the institutional multi-stakeholder group as a management platform to conceptualize and drive the project. The terminology caring will be fully defined in due course. So uh, thank you, uh, 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 Mr. Lowe. Um, I can just uh, indicate to the media that, uh, and also to the community out there, that the decision that council will reach at the end of the day wasn't a, a very easy decision. It was a very robust discussion. Uh, um, it was a tough decision to take. Uh, but the, the, the sort of guiding principle that we used was what would be for the best interest of the university. And that was the guiding framework that was always converts back to, to be able to, uh, to reach this decision. I also just would like to say that uh, the process itself can, can easily be broken down in about four areas. Uh, the one area was when the request was initially made and it was date, dated back as far as 2003 when this first uh, uh, issue of the removal of the stain statue was made. It was subsequently emphasized during the Rose Moss Fall uh, uh, movement and campaign by the students to management. And specifically this year, uh, when I had a student engagement, the students asked that the stain statue be removed. What we were able to do was to say that uh, whatever we're going to do, whether we remove the statue or whether the statue will stay where it is at the moment or whether it will be relocated to another place on campus, that, that will be done in a manner that should happen at universities. It's, a, it's about an educational process. It is about a process where we would like to hear the different views, different perspectives. And we also would like to create the platforms for those perspectives to come to the fore. And the first, uh, uh, the second process then after the request was made was uh, um, a conversation regarding the future of the Stain Statue. And that conversation stretches over about seven months period. Uh, it was consultative. Uh, it uh, included a two months public participation process. It uh, also allowed different stakeholders to write about the different perspectives in the media. And I could say it was covered by most of the media uh, houses. It was also covered in various television programs. We also had expert advice uh, provided by experts in the field of, of artwork, symbols, monuments and spaces. So that all provided and given input into uh, the process of consultation. I would like to add that, uh, we, that I appointed a task team to, to manage this whole process. And the task team uh, was uh, critically part of this consultation process. In fact, they spearheaded the consultation process. That led up to uh, recommendations that the task team made to the executive. Um, the executive deliberated that and made a recommendation to council. And that was the recommendation that was amended a bit uh, uh, but was ultimately approved by the Council of the University of the Free State. The very important uh, aspect that one should focus on now is what really happened after the decision has been taken. Uh, and the decision was taken earlier today by the Council of the University. And therefore, it is important for all stakeholders to understand that it's not about who lose or who has lost and who won. And who, would win, and, and, and who was on the winning side. It's really about that future that we would like
to craft ourselves as stakeholders of the university, and that include every all stakeholders, even the alumni, because uh, um, they are also key stakeholders of the university, to craft that new what we discussed in the council meeting, that new university citizenship. A citizenship that probably could also uh, spirit a conversation of what a South African, a new South African citizenship should be all about. So it's not about I'm right or I'm wrong, or I have to give up and I have to compromise, or I have to reconcile and uh, maybe the extent of reconciliation is not at the level where it should be. It is about crafting and respecting where we came from was different as different individuals, as different cultures, and how do we take the university forward? Uh, um, and that is the, the new university citizenship. And the Chair of Council has mentioned about the project caring, and that is what we discussed, could be the basis of how we take the future forward. Uh, it's a, it's a value that is supposed to be neutral, but it's a value that measure the strength of every individual. So if you have a culture, we need to make, to make sure that that culture is being cared, but in respect to where the university is going to go to in the future. If we talk about safety of students and staff, it is about because we care about one another, and that's the reason why we're doing that. So. For us, that, that new renew or new university citizenship, citizenship is going to be quite crucial in making sure that the decision that was taken today is a decision that creates a platform for us to start to think about ourselves as caring citizens, citizens for the University of the Free State. The Chair of Council also indicated that the project caring hasn't been fully uh, uh, um, deliberated on and it will be up to the university's institutional multi-stakeholder group to conceptualise the detail of the project, which obviously will be shared uh, 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 with the council and in due course will also be shared by the media. Uh, but what is clear is that the council have given overwhelming support uh, for this recommendation and ultimately the, the decision and also overwhelming support for the project caring to be taken forward. So I don't know whether, whether uh, the Deputy Chair of Council would like to say a few words and then we will open it up for any specific questions that you might have. No, not really. A lot has already been said and I think um, all the due processes, you know, have been followed and there's been discussions and uh, we are where we are and we're hoping that this sets a good example, you know, uh, moving forward, you know, to the rest of society on how to handle uh, such issues. I would, if I may, I would just like to commend the Rector in terms of uh, the detail attention that was given to the process. Uh, he's already explained that it took place over an extended period of time. But if it wasn't for, uh, for personal drive and, and personal involvement in uh, this whole project, uh, we would not have been at a place where we are today where uh, we think that we've taken one, one very big step forward in terms of, of bringing extremities in terms of opinions together. All right, so maybe if there are any specific questions that you would like to ask, you want, I deliberately didn't go into a lot of detail about the process itself, uh, the way in which we consulted, the different options that we needed to go into, and what was the arguments for the different options. But uh, if there are specific questions in relation to that, uh, we have provided and there will be uh, information that will be provided to the media, but also to, um, to our university community in terms of the report of the task team, uh, which will include also the timelines, uh, when the request was made, and, 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 and uh, the different uh, uh, engagements that we had. There will also be explanations uh, um, in the task team report why this particular decision was recommended. And, uh, and there is also 
uh, which would be available to the university community, but uh, on request, uh, the media could also look into that, a complete heritage impact assessment, uh, which is crucial and important, and in fact, is a, it's a, it is, it is a, 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 an, an expectation uh, from the Heritage uh, Council that that re, uh, uh, um, heritage impact assessment report need to accompany any legislative approvals mm. in terms of the relocation. So all of that detail uh, we've got and they will make it available, but if there are any specific questions in relation to that, then, uh, then, then you're welcome to ask. I just want to make a final, a final comment uh, on the issue of, uh, um, of statutes in general. Um, in my deliberation and, and, and trying to get uh, more professional views, uh, from uh, researchers and experts in the field of, of space, statues, monuments, symbols and space, uh, it became clear that in, 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 in the modern society and in fact in going forward uh, in that area of research, that statues is not normally the way to go because statues often uh, um, focus on a specific period. Uh, it, it, would, it would obviously celebrate the individual but it will celebrate the individual in the context of time. And uh, we're living in a society where, where we think changes and evolve continuously. And therefore, uh, a statue now, five generations from now, uh, might be seen as not befitting into that evolving environment. So specifically, what we've picked up in relation to the stain statue is not about empty stain uh, as a person. And in fact, part of the educational project was to expose mm. everyone to the knowledge of stain, uh, um, and to indicate that uh, he's not not necessarily the type of person that people make him up to be. Uh, but it was good to expose that knowledge to everyone, uh, staff and students at the university. Uh, it's a it's, it's it's what we if we see that through the lens of people that felt that uh, the, 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 the statue itself represents the, the pace of transformation uh, at an institution that we believe is a transformative institution and in a transformative society. And to what extent uh, um, the symbol or the monument uh, uh, inhibit that integration, uh, uh, um, celebration of diversity, uh, s creating a sense of belonging uh, um, and not reminding individuals of a history that they might not have been part of, or in a history which is, which is uh, depicted in an angle mm. which they might not have been exposed to. And, and, and therefore, if you're looking at modern literature, people would say that uh, uh, um, statues sometimes uh, um, are erected in a way where there's a homogeneous body, that have got a particular recognition uh, uh, um, or admiration for a specific person. But as time, that homogeneity becomes a heterogeneous uh, uh, um, uh, uh, composition, uh, which, which is not targeting only f uh, uh, looking at one specific stakeholder group. And therefore it puts challenge, challenges on how an inclusive society look at, at certain monuments or symbols. But the point that I would like to make in terms of is not about winning or losing, is that the project caring will try to emphasize that it's not now uh, um, an attack on a specific culture. It's not an attack on a specific ideology. It is to say that where the statue is situated, it provides a challenge for, for us as management, it's in front of the main building, it's twice the size of uh, a normal individual, if you take normal size on the individual, uh, and it creates a level of prominence that, 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 that probably exclude a certain group of our student and staff population that might not have experienced the history in the same way. And we felt that this particular statue uh, um, would, would probably uh, not be uh, promoting the type of university that we would like to see. But that doesn't, and I would like to emphasize, that doesn't mean 
that all of the, uh, um, the, the specific memorabilia, other symbols, statues that either belong to one or other uh, culture is now suddenly uh, up uh, to be removed or to be relocated. So I just yeah. If there's any questions, then you're obviously welcome to to ask that. Mm. John, I was from the Ford newspaper. Sorry, I'm still a bit confused. I mean, what's what's actually you know going to happen to the statue in the end, and where is going to land up? As, a, as I indicated, um, it will be done in full consultation with the Stein family. Uh, there is no finalisation at this point in time as to where it will be relocated to and we make very sure that we understand that there's a difference between the relocation and the removal. This uh, conversation will also happen and the details need to be fleshed out uh, with the Stein family in terms of uh, what are their preferences and uh, what are the logistics required to take care of that. Sorry, but, is that, but does that mean that it's still going to be on the university grounds? It's going to be completely removed? You know, what, so where are we going with this? The, yeah. so, so it will be relocated off the university campus. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. What, we, what, we, what the council uh, have indicated is that they wouldn't like to specify uh, at this moment where it should be relocated to, although there had been recommendations made but those will have to be tested with the Stein family. Mm. Can you just explain what your reasoning is why the statue actually needs to be taken completely off campus? Why it can't you know, be relocated to, to, to an, another facility on campus? Oh. Yeah, so so, so, so uh, um, we had four options that we assessed. Uh, the one was to leave the statue where it is, mm -hmm. uh, to leave the statue and reinterpret the, the, the space around the statue. And the third option was to uh, uh, relocate the statue somewhere else on campus. The feeling from the task team there was that if you relocate uh, the statue to another place on campus, that will reduce the prominence of the, of the empty stain. Uh, um, it will still be, because one of the other primary reasons uh, for relocating it somewhere else, into an environment which contextualized the history uh, in which uh, uh, and under which uh, empty stain has been operating and relocating that will still have the statue out of context uh, in a way. Uh, probably more so because there wouldn't be now a, a, another building in the background that necessarily will contextualize uh, uh, um, to a certain extent the statue. So those were one of the, those were the, ma the, the two major reasons why that option wasn't uh, recommended at all. Okay, so uh, I think we uh, we probably have come to the end of the of the media uh, uh, conference, uh, and I just would like to thank you, thank the media, hmm. uh, and obviously there would be more opportunity to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with, with with myself or other members of the chair or the deputy chair, if you wish to take that up. Uh, but thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you.